true freedom. And we'll take our text in the book of John, uh, chapter 8. We'll read verses 31 through 36. And, uh, and I will ask you to stand just in honor and reverence to the reading of his holy, inerrant, infallible word. John chapter 8, verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. <laughs> And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And they answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, Ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant which and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Father, Lord, speak to our hearts. Lord, let this be a message that lasts in our life. Lord, that makes a difference in our lives, in our thinking, O oh God, in the way we react to everything around us, God. May this message really speak to our souls. And Lord, may we be obedient to your word. Father, I ask for every, Lord, everything you want to do here this morning. I pray people will respond to you, Father, is our prayer. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And you can be seated. When Jesus was on trial and going through the trial process, he was being interviewed, so to speak, or being questioned by Pilate. And he asked Jesus the question. He said, what is truth? And of course, Pilate didn't recognize Jesus came to represent the truth. And, and we know that Jesus is the truth. And Jesus wanted people to understand and see this great truth and this great concept. But man being what he is and the nature of man being what it is, it's very difficult for people to get the very concept and the very idea of the Son of God into their thinking, into their being, and in a way that God wants us to understand it and wants us to know it. But he asked, what is truth? And now, many people in all walks of life, and I know at some point in time in your life, if you've done any reasonable thinking at all, you too have come up with the concept and the thought, well, you know, what really is, what is truth? You know, what, what, what entails, what makes, what makes something true? Uh, or, or, or why is it true? And several years ago, I come across an illustration, and I don't know where I heard it or anything like that, but it stuck with me. And the illustration was like this, that life was kind of like climbing up a ladder up a wall. And you only got to go up one time. And so here's how important truth is. And truth is so important that by the time you get to the top of that wall, you need to make sure that your ladder is on the right wall. Because if you spent your lifetime claiming something not true, then it's all for nothing. It's all for naught. You ask yourself, is that possible for somebody to walk in a way that's not true all their life? Yes, it is. You look at the religions around the world. These people are trying their best for religion to reach God or to attain God in some way. But it's very important that you and I understand that we are based in truth. And we, are, we, we had no for sure beyond a shadow of a doubt that we are in truth. And that takes some believing on your part. That takes some research on your part. And that takes a desire in your heart to want to know what is true. You can't just up and grab a hold of something and say this is true. It may be true or it may not. You see, New Agers claim that all roads lead to God. You can get on the Buddhist road or you can get on the, the higher Krishna road or you can get on the Christian road or you can do whatever road you want. Eventually you're going to get to God. Well, you ask, you ask yourself that question. Is that true? How does that all happen? But you understand the very concept of what Jesus wanted people to understand. He wanted them to know what truth is. And it was important that it was important to him that they understood this truth. And, and he did his best to help them see that he himself, the very God incarnate in flesh, is the truth of God that has been manifested here. Here I am before you now. I am true. I did not come to this earth through an earthly father. 
God is my father. I'm here. I'm now. I'm the son of God. For if you can determine, and if you can, if if you can understand what all that means. The Spirit of God Himself is going to indwell you and change you into the image of the Son of God. In other words, you are going to be grounded in God through the adoption process because of the Lord Jesus Christ coming to this earth and doing what you and I could not do. I made a determination several years ago that whatever is true is true. And I can do nothing to alter that truth. It's just there. I would be I would be foolish to try to change what truth is because you can't change truth. When people go to court to testify, they, they swear that they're going to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And I wonder in the courtroom how many times that that is, that is even not correct. See, oh, here was my determination. My desire was since I cannot change truth, I need to learn truth and let truth change me. Let it go the other way. I can't change truth. I've I've seen people try to say, well, it's whatever I think it is, whatever I imagine it is. You go ahead and imagine it. That's called relativity. You can go ahead and whatever whatever is relative to you at that time, you can call it your truth if you want to. But you have not changed truth one bit by believing a lie or thinking a lie or trying to live out a lie. So therefore, we need to know the truth. (laughs) And I want to declare to you this morning, church, there is true freedom available for anyone all over this whole world who will accept the true truth. I know there's denomination after denomination preach. Oh, we've got the truth. We're in the truth. We're in the light. We're in the truth. People can say whatever they want to, but whenever the end of this walk of life comes, their ladder best be on the right wall. It needs to be on the right wall. Or else they've got a severe problem because what they've done, everything that the Creator is for mankind. Just totally because they what they wanted or what they need to know what truth is. Today I want to point out some important considerations that we should make concerning the freedom that's been revealed in the text we read here this morning. Some, some important considerations. The first consideration I want to make is that the nature of this freedom that Jesus spoke about here, that he was implying here, the nature of, the, of, of, this, of this freedom. Well, the nature of this freedom, let me tell you what it's not. It's not a license to sin. Some people understand that you get, if, if you believe in, in, in the Lord Jesus and you can do whatever you want to and you'll still go to heaven when you die, let me tell you, you, you've misunderstood the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because Jesus clearly tells us, look with me, look with me there in verse 34. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is a servant of sin. So if you're going around committing sin, now that word commit here means I'm living in this lifestyle. This is my lifestyle I'm living. And you're living in that, then you're a servant to sin. And you're trapped in sin. And see, you're a servant. Now look what Jesus also said. And the servant abideth not in the house forever. In other words, when you hire somebody to come and mow your yard, he don't move in Normally he don't eat supper with you. He goes on about his way. Why? Because he don't belong to your household. He's not of your household. But Jesus said that the Son abides forever. Who abides forever? The Son abides forever. Why? Because your little child is your child. And they're going to be in your household. Most mamas and daddies don't want them to leave. When they do leave, they grow up and go away. I'd sprout their wings and go on. Some moms and dads says, thank God they're gone. And then some moms and dads are sorry they're gone. And of course you're glad to see them when they come back and visit. And after two or three days, it's kind of like fish. You know, two or three days, fish don't smell too good. Sometimes even family or friends come home two or three days and you're ready to see them go on back. And you can relate to that. And you know what I'm talking about. But you understand... The son belongs in the family. The son belongs in the house. Jesus has said here that the one who commits sin, 
This is the one who goes out freely. I just go out on my own. I just do whatever I want to do. See, the last of sin, you see people like that. They, they just go do live anything they want to do, and they have no remorse, nothing. There's nothing. Now, I'm not saying that Christians don't do things wrong. They do. But what I'm talking about is a lifestyle. See, now people get trapped. They get hooked. They get trapped. But they eventually break free. You know why? Because they're a son. See, the son belongs forever. Now, and Jesus said, if the son make you free, then you're free indeed. Now, what does that mean? That means that I, 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 there's nothing, I don't desire sin. Why? Because that's not who I am. I desire what my father desires. Why? Because he has, because that's who I am. That's my nature. I've been changed, my old nature. So see, first thing I want us to see is there's boundaries in this freedom. Let me talk just a minute about the boundaries in the freedom. So it's not a life of sin, but see, freedom has rules. Think of it like this. A baseball game, what do they have? They have a foul line, don't they? And if you knock that ball across the foul line, it don't count for nothing. A football game, they got sidelines. If you step on the sideline, stop right there. Everything's over. You, see, you play in a lot of different sports and a lot of different games. See, there is rules that you have to play by. Now, you as American citizens here today, you are able to drive an automobile on the highway. But you've got to go down and get a, what they call a license. If you drive without a license, they're going to give you a little fine. They'll, they'll, they'll make you pay a little extra. But then you'll eventually go get some license because you don't want to have to put up with that every time you get on the highway. But while you're on the highway, even though you're free to drive, you best obey the traffic laws. Can you imagine driving from here to Knoxville and not paying attention to none of the traffic lights? <laughs> You're just not going to go very far. You're going to pull out in front of somebody and they're going to wipe you out. But see, there's rules, even freedom. Freedom in Jesus, freedom in Jesus has rules. Because what do we do? We obey God. And when we step outside of those bounds of obedience, what happens to us? We suffer the consequences. This problem this week, I mentioned over in the Sunday school class, and we was kind of curious about why does this keep happening over and over, and why did it happen that way? Well, here's what came to my mind. It's just this simple. There's a problem down there that's not been fixed for years. And nine times out of ten, if it comes another rain like it did, it's going to leak again. You know why? Because there's a problem down there. And it'll keep doing it until the problem's fixed. In my life as a Christian, if I keep doing the same thing that causes pain or causes trouble or causes sorrow in my life, it's going to keep happening until I fix the problem. Amen. Until I relate to the Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, fix me. Lord Jesus, give me the strength. Open my eyes. Give me the understanding. And be willing to deal with it. That's why it's so important we understand truth. Let me tell you, we're free from the Adam's sin. We're just free from it because the second Adam took it away. See, Jesus being the second Adam, he bore the sin of mankind. One time on the cross of Calvary. Romans 5, 19, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners. That's you and I. So by the obedience of one, that's Christ. I'm obedient to Christ. Shall many be made righteous. And I, I saw a verse, I don't think I have it listed here today, but it's, it's talking about that, uh, that, that grace came through righteousness. Death came because of sin, but grace came, and I just say it lit up like a light when I, I'd never seen it before, but it lit up like a light. That grace, the grace of God comes through what? Through my behavior, through me being right. Through I need to do what's right if I'm going to obtain the grace of God and stay and walk in the good graces of God. Because if I step outside that righteousness that God gives me, then I'm just going to be right back having a leak again. That works real good. That, that, it might not in some of your brains, but it fits my brain real good because we spend a lot of hours acting like suckers <laughs> using shot backs down here in the basement this, <laughs> this week. <laughs> Church, we're free from the lash of the broken law.
because he's paid the penalty. Amen. The penalty of your sin has been paid. And he's met those righteous demands. The guilt of sin has, has been taken away. See, we're free from that guilt. Why? Because, because he has forgiven us our sins. He's forgiven us our sins. There's great freedom there. Romans 6, 16 through 18. He says, Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey his servants you are to whom you obey. This, this, this is what Jesus said over here in our text today. Whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. See that? Of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin. But you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. What was it? Jesus came, paid your sin debt. Now you can be free from sin, born of the Spirit of God, adopted into the family of God for above. That's the doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now then I don't have to be trapped in sin. I don't have to walk in sin unless I choose to. Most of the sin that happens in the church today is because people choose to. Very little of it is accidental. It's because I choose to do it. Paul says, being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. The servants of righteousness. Let me give you this. I know a few years ago, the, the powerhouses had all this black smoke rolling out of them. The smoke was just rolling out of these, these powerhouses like crazy. And then they enacted the Clean Air Act and so on and so forth and began to try to clean up the environment and clean up the air a little bit. Well, let's think about the smoke for a moment. When the smoke was coming out of that chimney, it was laden with soot and all kinds of uh, chemicals and stuff like that from the burning process and was being dumped out into the air. Out into the, well, let me tell you, that air kind of had a problem in a way. Because before that air entered into that furnace, it was clean and pure. But it was a problem of going into the furnace and picking up all that stuff that made it all dirty. Well, it's kind of like us. I mean, uh, we, when we were born, uh, we were born of Adam nature for sure. But I even envisioned, even back before I was born, an eternity past floating around wherever we were. And that's a great mystery. I don't really understand that. But see... God knows all things, so, but here we come, we come into this earth, and we begin to pick up a lot of this junk and a lot of this dirt. But you know what those guys, they some smart fellers made some things called precipitators, or we used to call them smoke scrubbers. But that smoke would be channeled in through that scrubber where the water was running and, and getting it taken through, and all that trapped, all that stuff would get trapped into that water and, and, and put down. And then the, the air would be released fresh again and go out and just be like a little misty steam coming out. In other words, clean coming out the top. You know why? Because it was cleansed. Now, church, here's what happened to us. Jesus Christ came, paid our sin debt, took all that stuff away from us. And there should not be any desire in our hearts anymore to continue to get all messed up and walk in sin and walk in the pleasure of this world when we know it's not what God desires for our hearts. So that's the nature of this freedom we have. Now let's talk about, let's talk about the means of, of this freedom. What, how, do we, how, do we, how do we get this? How do we get this freedom? Now Jesus said, Jesus said there in, 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 in verse number 32, he says, he says that you will, that you will know the truth. See this? He says in verse 30, and ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Now we're talking about we're talking about true freedom. There is not I don't care how free people think they are, they are not free unless they have been freed by the Lord Jesus Christ. There cannot be any freedom outside of the Lord Jesus Christ in this sense as far as true freedom. See that these Jews talking to Jesus, and he told them, by the way, he said, if you continue in my word. There were some who actually began to kind of believe in Jesus after talking to him. There you can read the previous uh, chapter and you could see and understand. He, the Jews basically was rejecting him and questioning him. But then there were some of them, the Bible says, that believed on him. It wasn't really that they really accepted him as the Lord and Savior. It's kind of like, they, well, maybe you may be right. Maybe, maybe you might be onto something here. And Jesus told them, if you continue in my word, 
And I can say that to us. If we're planning on being true Christians, then we got to continue in the Word of God in order to do that. Because I promise you, whenever you begin to let the Word of God lay, whenever you begin to kind of move away from it, you will, you will drift into the attitudes that you were prior to. You won't stay still. I'm telling you, in the Christian life, you're either progressing forward, you're walking on in Jesus, walking on in the Spirit, growing in the grace of knowledge, or you're backing up. There's no such thing as standing still. If you think you can stand still and take a break and just wait on it, you are sadly deceived. You'll drift and you'll find, oh yeah, I better get on the ball. I better get back in the groove. And then you'll begin to go forward again. I mean, how can I preach that to you? I've experienced it. A lot of you have experienced it. You know exactly what we're talking about. See, we need to go on. We need to go on in Him. But see, what's the means, the, the means of this freedom? It is, it is the, very, the very, Jesus said, you shall know the truth. In other words, the truth is what you're going to know. And I hope and I'm hoping that you're picking up, man, what I want in this life more than any other thing is truth. I don't mind. I'm not too much concerned about whether it's for me or bad for me, what I think about it or anything. I just need to know what's true. I'm willing to accept truth. Because something, let me tell you, I'm going to reiterate to you, you cannot change truth. What's true is true, and it'll be true. And I'm going to say this, God is God and He changes not. Don't you, don't you expect God to change for you. He's not going to. If he changes, he won't be God. See, he's got to be true to himself. He's, going, he's true to his whole universe he's created. He's true to everywhere, everything. So God won't change. That's why truth is not going to change. Truth is not going to change. John 1, 14 through 16. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory... The glory as of only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And his fullness, and of his fullness, have we all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but notice this. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace, what is grace? That unmerited favor. I didn't earn God's favor, but he gave it to me. And truth by Jesus Christ. So grace and truth by Jesus Christ. See, truth always has a freeing effect. I remember a time I've told it before, I won't tell it again. I was in the shop at the school where I've been working for 30 some years. One night, I was having a night class late, and I went through there and cut all the lights off. And I heard a fan running back in one of the welding booths. And, and you don't know what a welding helmet looks like. It comes down over your face and got a like that. And, and so uh, I, I heard that running. And, and I, in order to get the lights back on, I was going to have to go way around on the other side. Flip the switch, go back and turn that fan off, and then go back and turn the light off and go out. And I thought, no, I'll, I'll find my way over there into that booth. And I did, right where the switch was, where the fan was running. And I walked in that booth, and lo and behold, someone had hung a welding helmet right on that post. And I was walking in, dark, and it was dark. I mean, it was dark. And I walk in, feeling for that switch on the wall, and I face to face with that welding helmet and when I when I recognized when my eyes were just enough till I could see a little glare or whatever the hair on my neck stood up I mean it scared me silly because I was a frightened the reason why because I didn't know the truth I thought that was a monster <laughs> but it wasn't it was a welding helmet now if I'd had the truth of it I wouldn't have got scared see that's why we need to know the truth we, we really need the truth. As a kid walking home in the dark over there where we lived, there, there was a valley and the, they'd let the, the bushes grow up and it almost closed in. And I was always so fearful going through that place because it was dark. And inevitably, by the time I'd get there, I was fine until I got to that spot. And then as soon as I started going there, I, I, honestly, I could hear footsteps behind me. And I would get running. And the further the faster, till I got through and got to the top of the hill and I could see the house, porch light on, and then the fear left me. You know why? Because the truth was there wasn't nothing down there except a scared boy. 
And you see, I didn't have the truth. That's why I'm saying the truth, you see, the truth is, is wonderful to know. Not long ago, I had a horrible dream. I mean, I, I, I was so, I was, it was so real. It was, it was like, man, you've messed up. This is the worst thing. Oh, man, I'm, life's over for you, buddy. It just, that was the kind of dream I had. And it was so real. And I woke up, and I was in that bed, and I looked at it. So happy to know the truth. I was so happy to know that dream didn't happen. It was only a dream. That was like one of them like you just like wow, man, I'm glad that's over. But see, truth has has the freeing effect. Third thing I want to show you, and the last thing is the result of the freedom. Verse 36 says, As the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. You're going to be free, you'll be free indeed. And you so here's what's going to happen. There's going to be a great sense of peace. Jesus said, John 16, 33, he said, he said, these things that are spoken to you that you might have peace. The Lord wants us to have peace. If your life is not peaceful today, maybe you need to take another look at the truth. Maybe you need to analyze the truth and let the truth of God, let the, let the peace of God fill your heart. Are there going to be storms? Yes, there are going to be storms in your life. There's going to be troubles in your life. Oh, yeah, you've got to deal with this place. But there should be peace in the midst of all that. Listen, there will be light for the journey. John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Notice this, this blessed promise. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness. <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to walk in darkness. You don't have to walk in darkness either. You see, the result of this truth is that also, John 10, 10. See, the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. And I'm here to tell you today, you might not be tapped into it. You, you, you might be missing it. If you understand the truth, there is abundant living for you. And I'm not talking materialistic stuff either. The problem people can't live is because they are thinking materialistic things. This peace beyond more, what money can give you. There's a solace in God that you know everything's fine. Nothing wrong between me and my God. I'm eternally secure in Jesus. Why? Because I know the truth. I have been established in the truth. There's no condemnation. There's no condemnation in the truth. Paul said, Romans 8, 1, no condemnation of them which are in Christ who, walk after the, who don't walk after the flesh, but walk after the Spirit. Man, there's a world of wisdom right there. There's enough in that verse to straighten the world out if they could hear it. And there's a witness. Here's what I, but I fell in love with this. Romans 8, 16. There's, he, he said, the Spirit itself bears witness, bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. I would read that and it just kind of go over my head. And then read again, it go over my head. And then one day, boy, it tapped, my spirit tapped into that. Woo! The Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. That confidence, that peace, no matter what happens. See, Jesus died on the cross, beat bloody pulp and died a horrible death. Why should I complain? Because I have to go through a little misery. Most of the misery I go through in my own making, I'm the one who did it to myself because I don't walk in God's light and won't follow Him. That's where the Christians get in trouble. You see, the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. <laughs> Let me tell you something about a child. He can never cease to be a child. <laughs> Lord, open their ears. <laughs> Lord, may they hear. <laughs> a child never ceases to be a child. He may be a mean child. He may be a wayward child. But he'll never be anything but a child. He may drift away for a long time. Look at this old boy. 12 years aside the ark of safety for this boy. But what happened? God drew me into himself. And what happened? I didn't get saved all over again. No, I just come home. 
because I was saved second Tuesday night of February 1965. But then things got confusing in my life. I got all messed up. I, and then and, and Satan threw me, he, he threw me a curve, and a, a large curve. And I thought I was just wrecked for life. But God said, no, you're my child. Yeah. Let me tell you. You may wander in the far country, but you'll be back. You'll be back if you're a true child of God, if you know the truth. Jesus said you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. In conclusion, I just want to say quickly that, repeat that question again, what is truth? Most of you, if you're standing in front of the old pilot, you can answer that question for him today because the New Testament has revealed to us what truth is for sure. Pilate didn't understand. He didn't know. But you see, by continuing in the Word, we're promised that we will know the truth and that the truth will make us free. I saw this little saying on a church marquee several years ago. And it stuck with me. No Jesus, no truth. No Jesus, <laughs> no truth. In the English language, something, so much meaning right there in that statement. I'm wondering today, do you really know him? Is he your Lord? Are you walking in truth? Are you experiencing true freedom? And have you, are you letting that true freedom guide your life and lead your life? Stand with me this morning.